I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lucky woman. I'm well, a lucky woman. I, the thing is, you have so many wonderful friends that you've known throughout the years that you've worked with and work with, and yeah. Hey, whoa, whoa. What's this? Oh. Hey, what's, what is this? What's this? What? Is your oh my God! What's this? They this my AA Zoom this. meeting. Wait a minute, have they had to sit through all my crap? <laughs> and Karen, you got two, oh my God. Surprise, surprise. I'm so glad I put the bra on. Yeah, me too. <laughs> if not, pan up a little. And the earrings, and the earrings. And yeah, I did too, I put on earrings. People, yeah. I, people I love. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy, get back, it's gonna get better. <laughs> oh my there God. she is. Oh my God. Oh my Hi, God. Kathy. How is everybody? Patty, Fritz. Hi. Everybody. Fritz. Happy to see you all. I'm close Kathy to Kathy Buckley. Very good. Hi, sweetie. Fritz Coleman. Oh, here. Karen Cato. How was your interview, Roberta? Oh, you didn't get to see it? He's, he's, we've been talking since, uh, since 10 o'clock this morning. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to know everything. And, and we went all the way back to Elvis. So, you know, once it starts with Elvis, then I, you know, that's a whole story. Look at Patty. Look at Patty. Patty. Patty gets Patty. the background of the day. You look like you're in the rainforest. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, I planted all of these things from cuttings. Really? Well, you know what? It's Impressive. gorgeous. I do have plants from other people. And all I have is a background of a room that hasn't been fixed yet. <laughs> well, it looks great. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> well, what is it? Yeah, what is it? A hundred Oh. Oh. What's what's his name? Her name. Audrey, Audrey Hepburn. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> Hi, Audrey. I oh, that's Everything I have is Audrey Hepburn. Where, where's Liza? Where's Liza? Uh, I don't know. Uh-oh, you might have stepped around. <laughs> she's, she's some, she'll be here. She'll show up. How old is that puppy? Nine. Wow. Tiny little thing. Aww. Tiny little thing. She's Aww. a rescue. Well, I, I, this is so nice how you got all these people together. That's great. Well, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't want to. <laughs> Roberta paid us. They pay, paid a fortune, so I said, okay, right. <laughs> I well, thought we'd have a little party for Roberta. Yeah. Yay. I'm Karen, so glad you reached Karen out. came in from outside. It's only 100 and what, 11 today? No, right. today it's like a cold spell. <laughs> it's it's only 101. It's like nothing. <laughs> Palm Springs. Palm, Palm Springs. Spring. Last week, 118. Bye. And then 120 before that. That was that oh was that was ugly. 101 is like. How everything. do you breathe out there? You don't. And you put on a mask and you want to shoot yourself. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's something you have to get through. Don't put the mask on. Yeah, that's yeah, well. Humidity. I don't believe me. I don't till the till the glass doors open at Ralph's. Then I put it on. <laughs> now tell me something. You guys are walking around with your mask. Do, don't you feel like like a bandit or something? Well, I feel yeah. like I could rob I'm, something and no one would know. Uh -huh. See, I no, said, no. I said, Susie, I mean, Susie, I said going into surgery, Patty. It's like once you put the gloves oh, on, yeah, and you put the mask on. And I said, my mother would have been so happy, but I'm only going to smart and final. So it's, it's, a, it's <laughs> a bad situation. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a, it's a very sad situation. But I have the super Walmart, so can't beat that. Hey Fritz, Mr. Yes, retired, Mr. Retired guy, how That's you right. doing? Right. So, I wasn't that thrilled about being invited today, but I had nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're glad you're here. Well, you're staying out of the weather and you're indoors. Yeah. So, uh, David, what was, the, what was the most hey, interesting thing? Know what the weather is? Yeah. Here's what I say: Look on your fucking phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need to do these days. So, uh, where, 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 uh, Roberta, out, where did you meet Karen? Uh oh. Oh, we go way back. Yeah, but we really Karen. don't. Karen, <laughs> Karen, 
I mean, yeah. we go way back, but I didn't really know you till what, three years ago, really? That's right. Now we became really It's good. like you meet somebody in your life and you think, oh, I really like them. And then all of a sudden they're gone. Right. And then tw what, 20 years later, 30 years later, yeah, we meet again and we go, how come we're not friends? Uh, I don't know. So we, we became friends again. Then we remembered. <laughs> well, and then I you, you... I don't know where we met. Yeah. No, it was that it had to be during the game shows. It had NBC. to be a game show area. Yeah. Uh, okay. Heater Quigley. Yeah. Something. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Karen, did you work in that group or were you part oh, of the Lord, uh, production? Please. Yeah, I was associate producer for six years for Heater Quigley. So I did Hollywood Squares, uh, Magnificent Marble Machine, uh, the card game, which I can't, High Rollers. Uh, yeah, too many. And then we were in a meeting one day, six years later, and there was a three hour conversation about whether to use points or dollars, mm -hmm. three hours. And I said to myself, mm, I think I've been here too long. <laughs> and I left, I, that was it. I said, okay, gotta go now, I don't care. And they came to me and they said, well, what do you think, Karen? I said, I don't care. <laughs> points or dollars, I don't think it makes, I mean, ask anybody on the street how they score Hollywood Squares and see if they know. And yeah. that's where you worked together back at them. Uh, we knew each other. I knew mean, each I was, other. I was, a, I was an outside writer. You know, they didn't right. have really writers. They called them uh, creative consultants and stuff because they didn't want to pay through the writers union. Right. So we wrote and that's, you know, the, the story with the, the $5 a question or whatever. And then I just started hanging out because they played poker afterwards. And that's where I met my wonderful Art Elise. And we just played poker and, and did, uh, uh, and hung out, hung out with the stars. I got to eat dinner with, I mean, yeah. you know, Jaja Gabor. Uh, uh, I can't begin to tell you all of them. The the nighttime was Rock Hudson, every, just everybody. And I loved it. I loved the stardust. I mean, it was, and I was funny. Still do. And I, and I was funny, you know, and I, I, and I got on the Virginia Graham show from it because I was sitting next to her at dinner and telling her how I'd just been to the fat farm. And I was telling stories at the fat farm and she says, you have to come on my show. And I go, as what? I just was nothing. And she says, you'll come on as the social director of the fat farm. And I went on the show and girls, girl, girl talk or something. And girl talk, was it? Girl talk, yeah. Meanwhile, she was ordering pizzas to be delivered to the fat farm. <laughs> <laughs> no, Buddy Hackett did that. Buddy Hackett had the pizzas. He, he delivered the pizzas. I went out to Del Taco. I made a run. I made, I made a run. <laughs> uh, uh, Kathy Buckley, I saw your interview with David. It was really fantastic. Oh, oh thank you, darling. Really sweet. Really, really Karen, nice. Karen, it's about me tonight. No, it isn't. <laughs> no, right now it's about Kathy. It's about, Kathy gets a lot. It's about me. Tonight. Well, what, what about Kathy? Where did Kathy and, and you meet, Roberta? Go ahead, Kathy. I was an innocent bystander minding my own business. And this biash <laughs> shocked me <laughs> at a Halloween party. With no costumes. <laughs> but you, what was this, a naked? Uh... No, um, it was, um, oh my God, I forgot his name. Steve, 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 Steve Moore, Steve Moore. Steve Moore. Oh, God, oh God, I, pull, I pulled that out of my tukas. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing yeah. HBO, they were doing an HBO special, remember? Yeah, and, but we went to a pumpkin party. Yeah, nothing. You were following me all over the place, and you were scaring the hell out of me. Mm. Hey, she I knew that, 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 I knew who she, I knew who she was. I knew she was real popular. I knew she was a good comedian, and we started talking. And she says to me, "I see your father right behind you," and I go, "This is trouble." Since my father's been dead for, I, you know, he had been dead for a long time. Right. So, uh, now, yeah, I pursued the friendship. I had no choice. Well, where, did, yeah, where did you meet Fritz? Oh, Fritz, Fritz and I go way back to the company. Way, way, way back, huh, Fritz? Way back. No, we, we just worked a lot together. Fritz, yeah. Yeah. Fritz was doing his stand-up. And then we played the laugh stop that we got, you know, I, I, I opened for you in the laugh stop 40 years ago. Wow. <laughs> wow. Is it that much? And you know who was the manager of that club? And I didn't realize that until recently, Bob Fisher. <clears throat> uh, 
of that of uh, oh of the one the one Bob that, Fisher the Newport Beach Laugh Stop. He was the manager down there. Because Michael Michael Kaley owned them. Well, he owned the chain, but Fisher was the. I'm sorry, I'm the last person in North America that has a fax machine. That's what. <laughs> yeah. That's so. That's okay. Roberta got a call earlier. I got a call earlier. We chatted yeah. with him. Fred Fred called earlier. I had to tell him. <laughs> Fred called. But that was it, and. Uh, you have a picture of me on the marquee with you, uh, you know, opening for you or something. Wow. We worked together. Well, we were, yeah, we worked a lot together. I kept telling, uh, listen, I, I adore Fritz. And every time I've always wanted him to, any show I've ever done or whatever, I've wanted him to be on. And, it, and the best part is, is that when you bring somebody to some, something, it's like whether it's Kathy, whether it's Car all, all of you here, Patty, Patty especially, I mean, with the singing and everything like that and her talent. We'll get to you, Patty. And uh, <laughs> and with Fritz, I mean, it, it's, it's like he's not just the weatherman. This is a, this guy. The last show I did, everybody was like, they were like going crazy. And then I went and saw you. I brought a bunch of people. Where was it? To the uh, colony, right? Was mm -hmm. it the colony, Fritz? Where you did your one-man show? Nobody in our business is more supportive of other comedians than or, or just people who happen to say yeah, people in general that's right you broadened my circle of friends you invited me into this beautiful group and all of you here are included in that in art as if i'd known you all of my lives and i always just appreciated that that you would expose me to your other friends and not be threatened about what i could do to the relationship and not have to go to the hospital <laughs> what i could do to relationship. would right. you say patty yeah patty where did you both meet Go ahead, Pat. You and Roberta, Patty. You you um, helped me with my act. Wesley Europe brought us together. She had heard about. It's she a, heard about me. She was playing my putting a putting an act together, and I was yeah. at the fat farm. And I said, she said, <laughs> she said, do you think you could help me? And I said, I'm at a fat farm right now in Lancaster. <laughs> and I said, I went every year. I, it was great. I came back tan and thin. It was great. Just ate myself back up till the next she, summer. It was great. It, it was great. We drive down there. She drove to Lancaster. And it was 121 degrees. Yeah, please. And she wanted to go for a walk. Around the lake. They had a lake. They had a lake with ducks and stuff. They had a lake there. So I not the heat. <laughs> and, but, she, and I said, would you do me a favor? Would you? And she sang for me. And that, was it. that was it. She said, well, yeah, I have yet to hear her sing. I keep hearing about it, but she yeah. hasn't sung at any of your events. No, she won't. She won't sing anymore. But uh, we have you to know, the Roberta, the thing that you did for me, you were the first. I had been singing practically all my life, but you were my first professional audience. You actually watched. Oh, hold, on. Whoa, whoa, hold it. Put a hold on there. We've got the lunch here. Well, I interrupted something emotional and tender. Yes, you did. What does your t shirt say? I, uh, I think it says, I only listen to the voices in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's if you're wearing pants. <laughs> oh, exactly oh, right. Wow. And I already been, gave, the voices and I, have been free for months now. And I already gave you such a mention. When we were oh, yeah. oh, I'm good. I'll have to. I, well, it was it, when we were talking before, actually, before this was all a surprise to me. You and you too, Bruce. It's all a surprise. I understand. Oh, I, 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 he's been planning this thing. It was it was like the invasion of Libya. <laughs> 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 Bruce, so on this podcast that I'm co-hosting until yes. I'm fired, <laughs> I uh, interviewed Dan Wolf that did the time warp films about cult films in the three segments that you uh -huh. were part of, and your participation was awesome. Those were really okay. interesting. Was it, it was, and it was to promote his newest one, which is about nudity in film, which came out. Oh. Why well, wasn't I in that one? <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer. It's, I only work in IMAX. <laughs> wow. It was really, it, there were some interesting ones. I there love the no, There were no clips yet. Fritz, hey Fritz, this is about me. I know, really. <laughs> <laughs> who did I interrupt? Who's the other blonde who I interrupted? Patty Weaver. Patty. Oh, hi. Hello. 
Hello. You, you, you've been to the hair, hairdresser, haven't you, Bruce? So I have actually. Since we last, I got, since we last, I got a little came to me. I got burnt. I got she. She. Uh, I got Bruce my hair did. Same hairdresser. <laughs> well, Jana Lazar, is she yours? Is she. Uh, well, we all, you know, exactly. We're we're fried blondes. <laughs> well, I mentioned I mentioned you because I said that uh, the we asked week, of course, about Barry Manlow. And yeah. I said that I always felt that uh, I was to bury what you are to bet. There's no doubt about well, that. Well, that's true. That's, you know? that's fair. Yeah, sure. All the fun stuff that comes out and everything like that, the clever stuff. And uh, uh, now we were we were getting on to, to Patty, how I met Patty Weaver. Patty was on, uh, tell me your history, Patty, first of all. I was, I was on Days of Our Lives. It was on Young and the Rest. I had a nightclub act. And all the years that I was performing, what I was going to say was, you were my first professional audience. You, you pinpointed things that I was doing during my act, and you made it better. You just hired it better and helped me see what I could see. She and I, I, you made it. She, she came, thank you. She came up to my fat farm, Bruce where I was uh -huh. in Lancaster. Oh my she, drove, God. she drove up there and it was a hundred and something degrees. We walked around the lake, she sang for me. And I said, I will definitely write for you. And she ended up opening for what? You opened for Don Rickles, you opened for all the old cockers. <laughs> yeah, George Burns, uh, Jerry Lewis, wow. uh, Bob Newhart. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about comedy by watching um, these comedians, they were terrific. And their timing. And I traveled with her and, and the best part is my favorite story about Patty is, and a wonderful thing that Barry did is that when I was working with Patty, we were on like a little bit of a hiatus thing. And I kept saying to Barry, wait till you hear this girl sing, she's fabulous. And I came up with this great idea. This will always be my favorite thing, Patty. And I said to Patty, you know the song Fame? And I said, let's slow it down, baby, look at me and tell me what you see. You ain't seen the best of me. Remember my name. And I said, let's end the act in that and you'll have a pin light on you. It's a great idea, great idea. Now she's got to find somebody to do the arrangement. She can't find anybody to do the arrangement. So I say to Barry, listen, in those days, Bruce, he'd do anything, yeah. <laughs> he'd do anything for me. I said, you could do this sitting on the toilet. <laughs> so he did it. He did. And I remember. It, yep. And it was. It, it was, was. To this day, it's still a beautiful arrangement of the song. Yeah. But forget about me. I was thinking of the funniest time that I had with you, Roberta, when I convinced you to buy a pair of Spanx. Oh, God. <laughs> when, oh, dear. Whoops. <laughs> when you. And I came over to your house. To help you get oh, in them. <laughs> Not pretty. Not pretty. No. Uh, Not is there footage of this? <laughs> Look at David, do we have footage? So footage. It was a 4.8. <laughs> it was <laughs> fabulous. Right. Wait, you, you, guys, those? you missed my show and tell of me and with Elvis. Oh, uh, there you are. <laughs> I'm next to the teddy bear. Ah, where, oh my God! Where, where are, are you? Which one are you? Next to the teddy bear. Yeah, he's singing to her. Won't you be my? Oh, teddy you're bear? the teddy bear. That's yeah, right. Right. I was thir Thirteen years old. Wanted to be the teddy bear. Thirteen years old, and we went. And our fan club got to meet him. No, it was later on in life when I became seventeen, eighteen. I went up to the house, mm -hmm. and that's the whole story I was telling about Sandy Martindale, who I met up there, and Sandy was dating him. Because I used to always say to Sandy, "Did you sleep with him?" No, I really didn't. I go, "You're so full of shit." Don't oh, really, me. really. <laughs> You'll cut this out. Anyway. Well, Roberta did. <laughs> no. Roberta no did one you ever did. With him. <laughs> Cher says she didn't either, so. But Sybil <laughs> Shepherd did, and Sybil will give you anatomical detail. Oh, wow. Painful anatomical detail. <laughs> just <laughs> one cocktail, and boom, it will just. <laughs> well, let's ask her now. Here comes <laughs> Sybil, ladies and gentlemen. 
And so did, by the way, so did Sally Struthers. She slept with him too. Really? Uh, yeah. I've heard that, yes. In Palm Springs, in Palm Springs, she says, she always told me, she says, he wasn't that good. I go, don't you ever say that again. I says, I'm telling you right now. She says, you just, he was the king. You just say he was good. That's, That's right. Well, what Sybil says, but I wasn't going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Robert! What about these cult films like that you did, like Tunnel Vision and Kentucky Fried Movie? I'm the cleanest thing in both of those movies. <laughs> They're <laughs> classics. I am the cleanest thing in both of those movies, and they were ahead of their time. They were really ahead of their time. They were. They're great. And one I of the them. nicest things that happened: a guy named Clara Bybee. To remember this name out of my ass. This, this was a lesson in life that I learned when I was working on squares and different shows. When I was in both of those movies, my friend Steve Stucker, who was in Airplane, he was the gay guy in Airplane, yeah. Auntie M, Auntie M, up in the control tower. He, he was one of my friends from the Pasadena Playhouse and he lived with me. And at that time he wasn't living with me. And he called me up and he says, your name's on the marquee at the Vine Street Theater. And I said, you're so full of shit. He goes, I'm telling you, it says Chevy Chase, it says Roberta Kent. I says, you're full of shit. So I get in the car and I drive up there and sure enough, my name's on the marquee at the Vine Street Theater. And I go into the, into the theater and I said, who puts the names up on the marquee? And they said, a guy named Clara Bybee. I had no idea who that was. I really didn't. And I'm thinking, wow. And, and maybe about two weeks later, I'm doing Hollywood Squares and I'm hanging, I'm hanging out. And he comes over, this guy comes over to me and he says to me, he says, how'd you like your name up on the uh, marquee on Sunset? I says, I know, I saw it. It was great. And he says, I did that. I says, you gotta be kidding, really? He says, I'm in charge of seven different marquees up and down the boulevard and I can put whoever I want. And you were in both movies and I could do that. And what he said to me was, you've always been nice to me. You've always like singled me out. You've always been nice to me and I wanted to do that. And it was a lesson to, you never know where people are going to end up. That's why I was that way with you, Kathy. I didn't want to take a chance, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> for you to be nice to me. That's it. I had to be nice to you. But that's, that was a changing point in my, it really was. And it, it, what a strange name, Clara Bybee. And, and we've run into him several times. He said, I don't know if you remember me. I go, remember you. I go, you're part of my history. I absolutely remember His you. His name was Clara? Clara, like Clara Bow. His name, uh, the, boy, the guy's or Clara name? Bell. Yeah, like Clara Bow. Clara. That really ages me. Yeah. Clara Bow. Not that I knew her, but uh, Clara Bow. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Claire. I knew you'd like that one, Bruce. That's the title of the movie. I have a question for you, all you comedians. Ooh. Where can you perform now? Where do you Here. Go? Right where you are, and it's awful. Right where? We're zooming like mad. Oh, man. I mean, you guys are so funny and, and you're so terrific, but you can't go and see you. So how are you handling that? Well, there are different ways that people are doing things. Uh, for instance, Bobby Collins is doing an Instagram live thing and sometimes a Facebook live thing. And it's not real stand up. It's him having a conversation with another stand up, which is amusing. But these Zoom things are miserable. I don't know how you feel yeah. about it. They're just yeah. well, there's no reaction. It's all Oof. You know what I told Bobby so to do? It? I, I told Bobby and I told Wendy Liebman too. I said, what you should do is, remember that thing we had like a bag of laughs? Yeah. And you, you yeah. smacked it and it laughed and then it, if you smacked it, it, it applauded and it also did yeah. farting. And I told Bobby, I said, you should get that. You'll do your own applause, you know, to be funny at least, you know. I'll get it. <laughs> I, it's, on, it's, on, it's on Amazon. Yeah. That, well, they can do what they you can do what they did at the at the Democratic convention. Is uh, they take bows to uh, to a, a screen full of forty people cheering and laughing. Oh yeah, yeah. You just have to have Glenn Weiss sitting behind a board somewhere <laughs> and organizing shots of all those people. That's all. It's simple. It's a small little thing. Don't you miss performing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> of course. I think we're going to be doing it at Vitello's out in the street, Fritz. <laughs> I said, are you afraid of losing your timing? Well, Just late in my career? Wait, who wrote that? <laughs> 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 Some guy. I can't think of his name. Oh, oh. Oh, I, I. Oh, I forget his name. 
you know, and, and I, 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 if, if looking into the future, and it won't be in until well into 2021, if we're lucky, even if they reopen some of the smaller venues like the Tellers or the Ice House, and they do an insistence on social distancing, and they say, okay, you can only have 50% of the audience, a lot of clubs won't ha be able to afford to open with 40 or 50 people. No. The larger venues may survive, yeah. but the smaller venues won't be able to open with 40 or 50 yeah. people. So, so it's that, really interesting. That's, that's the problem with the theater, with Broadway. I mean, yeah. the thousand seat house is now a 500 seat house. Yeah. How are you affording that? I mean, if you're Hamilton, that means you're not bringing in three million a week, you're bringing in a million five, so you're okay. Uh, but if you're anything but a blockbuster hit, yeah. and uh, how do you make money on that? Your, your nut is the same, no matter how many people are, uh, are buying tickets. So uh, it's, uh, they're trying to figure that out now. They're trying to work out. I mean, obviously the, the one way is rollbacks, but nobody wants to do rollbacks. Nobody wants to give anybody rollbacks, least of all the, the below the line, the stagehands and stuff, the union. Mm -hmm. The actors would be the first ones to cave, you know, because we want to work. Yeah. But uh, um, so, you know, you won't see anything until next spring at the earliest anyway. So. Karen's, Karen's got it the roughest. With her, with her, like her Comic Con things, with the with the celebrities, with the signings. I got nothing. Right now. Yeah. Well, I'm doing private signings right. at oh. home or wherever they want to do it. Wow, that's a good we title for a the, porno. Just the, <laughs> yeah, I just booked, I just booked Angelica Houston this morning. Oh. So we send her all the pictures, and then she signs them, and then we pick them up like five days later, and you know. Oh wow. But so people don't care about the personal uh, rapport with them? They, they really just want the item? That's enough? They just want the, yeah, they just want the signature. The so she's at $20,000 signing. So I've oh, never been able to book her for anything, but she's- So is, do, is that your business, uh, Karen? Do you do that? It's huge. Yeah, it's mostly part of my business. I book celebrities all over the world and America for different, for personal appearances, uh, autograph shows, film festivals, not right now. Uh, yeah, I just booked fantastic stars for fall, but fall this year is what? I mean, we don't know, and they're all in their 80s. I booked Judy Dench and uh, Sophia Loren, great bookings, I might add. Wow. Wow. Yeah, really exciting, and Vanessa Redgrave and uh, Elijah Wood, but they're all uh, Dusseldorf, they're all in Germany, and yeah. how's that gonna happen? I don't know, I don't think Judy Dench is gonna get on a plane no. And, and this year and go anywhere. She's Are you, Karen? Pardon? Are you going to get on a plane? And go? Right now, we can't go. We can't go to Europe. They won't let us in. I'm not going. I'm getting on a plane if they get on a plane. Yeah, but. Right really? Now, I, I doubt. Oh, yeah. I, I, Karen, would, so would, you, like, like with the major stars, Angelica Houston, Judy Davis, do you pay them a flat fee and then they go and just sign for the whole weekend? Or? We offer them a fee. It's usually based on per autograph. So if we give them, wow. um, you know, a thousand autographs to sign and twenty dollars each, they get twenty thousand cash, all in cash. Nice. So yeah. yeah wait a minute. What you're, what you're not doing, the ones that she was doing, <clears throat> you talking Richard Dreyfus. They get people come and they stand in line and he stands by a shark and they get a picture with him by a shark. <laughs> Boom, 40 bucks, and they're out. And she puts it, you know, she lines up the, these people. What was it, Angie Dickens? I helped her with Angie Dickens. Yeah, right. I have like 30 40, pictures. I have like 30 40 pictures out there, of her. you know, of Angie Dickinson. So everybody picks out the picture they want. They go and sign it. I mean, it's, it, it, you know, those, it, it's those Hollywood star things that they go to. There's shows, there's shows when, when there are, there's shows almost every weekend. And I've done shows in Australia, uh, London, Germany. They're all over the world. Wow. So if a star is a good name, like Elijah Wood, his guarantee is 100000 per autograph show. So, Isn't that something? Isn't that something? So I made him last year about four, a half million dollars. Oh my God. Who puts Signing up that his, money? Is that, who what? Who, put, who puts up that money to the, pay? The, the, the uh, promoter. Right. Oh, so there's a promoter who you work yeah, with? Yeah, but he know. knows he's going to make it. So Because Elijah Wood will pull in thousands of people to his show. Mm -hmm. So And he always makes it. Not only does he make it, he tops it. 
It always goes over a hundred grand. It's like unbelievable. And it's all cash? All cash, always. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. The problem is when you're in a foreign country, you have to figure out how you want to get it back. <laughs> you know, you can't carry a hundred thousand dollars in your carry on. I did a retired weatherman's weekend at the La Quinta Motor Inn. <laughs> Great spot. Great. Five bucks a pop, you know, I... I, 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 I <laughs> Hi, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, this past year, for the first time, you still got it, Fred. You <laughs> still got it. He's working on it. Yeah, a question from each of you: What is one a memory that really sticks out with you, with Roberta? Driving with her. Oh, her. Oh, her. <laughs> <laughs> what? Driving what? with her. Don't drive with her. No, it's not good. Oh, I have a lot of memories, but she's Look not at the pot, the pot calling the kettle. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, see? You tell yeah. me, give me a name of who's going to drive with you. Uh, yeah, almost everybody. All right, cut her square, her, square her square out. Take her square out. Take her square out now. Oh, my God. <laughs> How about you, Buckley? Oh, there's so many, honey. There's so many, yeah. but the one the one that really sticks with me right now is every year we used to go to Laguna Beach for the yeah. um, Master pa Pageant of Mastery, something like that, and we would go there, and the first time as Roberta and I were becoming friends, I had dropped a dumbbell on my foot, and it was just big and swollen from it, and I actually had to drive to her house to prove that I hurt myself, because otherwise, she don't let you out. So, I, she <laughs> okay, you can stay. So, that was our thing. Uh, well, well, my, my best memory of her is, uh, well, uh, doing the pageant of Masters this past year with Art, which was spectacular. Yeah. But uh, when, when she did a birthday party for herself, and she rented the hall, she was the greeter, she was the valet parker, <laughs> booked the performers, she orchestrated the whole thing, and it was so cool. I got a chance to see how far and wide the tentacles of Roberta Kent's <laughs> essence spread. And it was the last conversation I had with Taylor Negron, who passed away like four months after that. You were out of town, Bruce. I was, yeah, I know. But I was there at uh, Vitello's upstairs. I was part of that. Yes. Oh, that was a great evening. <laughs> that was great good. night. I was there with Lily Tomlin and... Uh, and I Karen performed and I did. Chris yeah, that's got right. It all. Well, yeah, mine yeah. is uh, um, it's it's almost it's kind of almost professional. There was it was a benefit like forty years ago. Uh, oh. The first guy who wrote for Bette Midler was named Bill Hennessy, uh, and he was a hairdresser at Bergdorf's, Mr. Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and he would write for her in his spare time. And she was at the Tubs. And, and then I met her in Chicago. And I wound up uh, being a part of that team. And uh, uh, Bud Friedman, who was uh, her manager at the time, at the very beginning, said, uh, uh, she, she said, well, this, this guy who's a journalist and uh, uh, wants to write, wants to write uh, for me. And uh, he said, well, you know, that now you're happening. When it, when it began, you just had a hairdresser writing for you. And now a lot of people are going to write for you. And then he, he called her back the next day and said, well, I met him last night. And he, it's just hairdressers who are writing for you from now. <laughs> <laughs> I qualified. Anyway, so he left her and he became a manager. He managed a, a, a group called Gotham that was three guys singing and a bunch of other people. And he got sick. And this was, uh, I don't know, as about, uh, it may have been, in, it was in the 80s, but it was one of the earlier cases. And uh, we threw a benefit for him because he had no money of his own at the Wadsworth uh, on, in Westwood on the Veterans mm -hmm. Campus. And it was Bet and Barry and Gotham and Melissa Manchester and all the people who had been in Bet's orbit at the beginning um, were there. And I was standing in the back of the theater during the show at, with Roberta. We were standing next to each other and Barry was on. And we were like both kind of there as like, we were like we were coaches. <laughs> 
we were watching thing, and I and I was watching Barry, and I always I'd worked with Barry at the very beginning when he was Bet's piano player, and he had the first tour when he broke away from her, and then Roberta had come in after that, and uh, I was uh, I was watching him, and I always loved watching him, and then and there was something going on next to me, and I couldn't, and I was looking, and it was Roberta, she was mouthing along all the lyrics, and she was gesticulating, like he couldn't see her, but she was going like this, and he would get up and move. And I thought she was like the puppet master. And the last <laughs> number was, I write the songs, and he was in this pin spot in the middle of the I, I'm a music, I write the song. And her arm <laughs> went up like this. And when the pin spot went off, she was like, at the same time she went, and I thought, she is Svengali. <laughs> she has put this whole thing together and is so invested in it, <laughs> you know. And I was, I was very impressed. I thought I would uh, get more invested in the work that I do, you know, because I would be distracted by a cute usher. <laughs> 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 but she was in there, and I, I it was very, uh, it was, it was an inspirational moment. I never knew that. <laughs> That was nice, really nice of him. That was very nice. That was very, very nice. Kathy, you didn't get to say much. No. Did you trying to figure out what everybody, I'm so happy to see lips. Lips are in front of me and I'm just dumbfounded over here. <laughs> That's right, you don't have any man. Well, you know, it's interesting, like when we do the, the, the Zoom nights we're together, Kathy and I a lot of times just sit back and smile and enjoy the whole thing. <laughs>